All right, so yesterday I had this service call where I had a breaker that tripped on a walk-in cooler, and it was a circuit with 10 fans and two evaporators across the two fans. My evaporator one had, you know, the five fans with each of the fans wired in parallel with each other, and then we had the other evaporator with those fans in parallel also, identical evaporators, and then both fans were then wired together in parallel into the circuit. And the breaker tripped, I had, uh, I used pretty much the meter to find the short, and then I did some more diving into, you know, the resistance of these motors on the evaporator I was working on, you know, and, and how the meter can deceive you. It's really tricky. I'm not sure if I'll ever learn ohms and understand it like I should, but I think this call I did yesterday helped me, even though I've been doing it for 24 years, I think it helped me understand it a little bit better uh, than I already did, kind of, so uh, check it out. Now I'm also looking at this. This said, uh, we got a trip breaker right here, number 24. Number 24 stands coils DCL. Could that mean dairy cooler? I suppose it could. So we're going to keep an eye on that. So here we are, circuit 3H. Dairy walk-in cooler. We got no fans. It looks like... Oh, we're feeding refrigerant though. You see all that ice? So, could we have a no power issue? Probably, since we got that breaker trip. But why did the breaker trip? It's a question. Sometimes they just get old and weak, but not very often. But sometimes they do. Okay, so we need to check power. And so, to check power on this piece of shit, I'm going to go on top and I'm going to check in the junction boxes above. So if you can, you want to position your ladder smart to where you don't really have to make too far of a stretch to get up there and into where you're going and make sure your feet always land properly. What a freaking mess, huh? Jesus Christ. So we're going to go all the way over here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Right there, it should be, yeah, right there, right there's one, and over there, it should be another one, but right here's fine. Be nice if I knew what breaker boxes those were going to, probably the one I just checked a little bit ago. So it goes over, that way, around, up, back that way. I think there's some breakers down there, I'll have to check them in a minute, but I had the one that said 24, that was tripped. Okay, so I've tested my circuits here. It looks like my blue one right there has no power going to it. You see, I got that. When I go across to the other ones, I got power. See? Anyways, blue ones have no power. And so the blue ones are going to feed my fans because this is the electrical that goes down. We've got the blue and the white that's uh, common and hot to feed the fans. Look, it's labeled also 2-4. Ain't that something? So I got a, a, a trip breaker for this. Now since I've got no power, I can ohm the circuit out and not mess my meter up. So when I ohm the circuit, I've got 8 ohms. Now this is connected to both evaporators, which is probably like 12 fans total. All right, so if I break that down into the different branches, you can see I've got 52 ohms to the evaporator that's further that way. And then I got eight ohms to the evaporator that's right underneath me. So based on those two different readings, ohm readings, and we've got two identical evaporators, one of them has a problem, and it's telling me that right here. Across all those motors, I can find a short. That statement was not entirely accurate. Actually, I should have been checking also to ground. Which one is it? Take a guess. Put it in the comments, and then I'll tell you at the end of the video. I'm going to guess too, because I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm going to guess that it's the one that says eight. So it's going to be this one right there, the one underneath me. So when you walk in the coolers, one to the left, I'm going to guess that that one has the short. Okay. So I'm going to connect these ones back together, try to go turn it back on and see if it trips or if it don't trip. All right, so it's connected back together, the evaporator to the right, and then just to double check, so we've got an evaporator pulling seven ohms across all the motors. And we're gonna see if I'm right. I'm gonna go turn it on. If it trips, I was wrong. If it stays on and the fans on the one on the right turn on, I was right. All right, my friends, let's see. <laughs> so, I was right. I'm always right. Like I said, sometimes breakers trip and they go weak and they get bad and they get messed up, but not very often. In this case, not that's one that's what I'm talking about. So I got a problem in, up in here. So I got me I got to move all this shit right here. Hey, that's stupid. That's stupid. <sighs> Oh, well, at least it's a uh, time and a half. And I got it back on and cooling somewhat. All right, so it's really not as bad as it looks, you know. Gave one of those and just start, you know, packing stuff in. All right, so I'm going to start out like this because maybe I've got a wire rubbing up in here, up in here. So we're gonna check there first before I move all this freaking Christmas candy. So oddly enough, right here I'm reading 13 ohms, and I'm gonna guess that that's because the neutral wire has power going through it, because I don't have this blue connected up there. Remember, it's loose. So a little flutter around. No, see, it's all over the place. It was, it was showing 15 a minute ago. Like when I take them apart, watch. We'll hold it. Yeah, watch. I take them apart and I go just to the fans. Oh, that means that's a little closer to eight. I swear it was saying 15 a minute ago. So we've got, it's fluttering some between eight and 15. This one, when everything was off, it was showing 51 ohms. Now look, I've been doing this long enough to know, usually the shorts happen on where the fan motor wires, right up here, the fan motor wires, they rest on the brackets. You see, look. I mean, I'll show you in a minute. Anyways, it's gonna be a wire that's, that's laying on a bracket, a fan motor bracket, and that fan motor bracket, it's got, it's rubbed out, and it's shorted. The copper wire has rubbed through the insulation or the bracket has rubbed through the insulation and we got a conductor touching the bracket. Check it out. You know how I know that? Because when I go between, let's see, I can stick that. Since I only got one hand here, I'm recording with one hand. Stick that in there, that's one side. I've got, hey. I've got a direct short, no resistance, to ground between my hot conductor. And then between my other conductor, I mean, between neutral and ground, or the case. I've got that, I've got that, what I had a little bit ago. So, my hot wire on one of those runs in there is resting on a fan bracket. So here I am on the third motor, and right there, I don't know if it's gonna focus or not, but right there is a spot to investigate. I looked in here and I didn't see it. I didn't see, it. it's not touching the bracket anywhere. So I'm not gonna pull this one off. I pulled that one off a minute ago, not thinking, but I'm gonna pull this middle one off right here. And I'm going to pull that wire off. I'm going to see if I can see copper. If I can, then I'm going to check my resistance there. I might just be able to tape it up. I might have to cut it. 
and wire nut it if it's eight enough of the copper strands to where it, it's not enough of a, of a wire to support the rest of the amps. Look. Look at that. It was stuck. It was stuck to the bracket. All right. There's my short. Now that I got it off the bracket, check my ohms. Unfortunately, that wasn't it. I've got it off, and this piece of shit is still reading 9 ohms. Ohms there. It looks like it looks like the freaking short is worse on the neutral side. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. Let's see. I can uh, see. I can disconnect these. All right, it's starting to get really freaking cold in here, but I disconnected them. So I got two motors over there that are connected together, and when I go here, when I go here to ground and here, I do. The, Neither of these are shorted to ground, okay? I tested that. Over here though, these ones have continuity to ground. So it's in one of these three motors, I got problems. Now then, I've disconnected this motor from these three. That's that right there. And I'm testing here to these two motors to ground. My short is in one of these two. Okay, so these two motors were connected together with here. I took this motor out of the loop by unplugging it here. Test it between these pins and ground. Nothing. I had 41 ohms here, which is the same thing I had on that motor. This motor's good. Take my meter leads, go up in here, test from here to ground, short. The only place it can be is gonna be over here. Let's take it off and see. Okay, well I was wrong, again. All of these tested 41 ohms, I was getting continuity between one side of this and the case because it was back feeding from neutral to ground back at the, the breaker box. But when I have two motors together, a 41 ohm and a 41 ohm together, and I test them right here, I got 21 ohms. I got two motors there touching together, you know, with each other, and I'm getting three ohms yeah, three ohms, three or four ohms between the two leads. So I gotta move this pallet and check it out. All right, so here's the final analysis. These two motors are ohming differently because they're different. They don't have capacitors on them. Eight ohms, eight ohms, tested there with nothing else connected, eight ohms. 41 ohms, 41 ohms, 41 ohms. Those three have capacitors, these two don't. They're different motors. I believe all these motors are good. I need to put some tape on there because that's uh, that's that's okay actually. I don't know if you can tell or not, but she'll do. All right, I put my wires together now. So that means when I go flip that breaker, if it stays on, all my fans came on, and I'm done. I gotta put the fan shrouds back on though. All right, so that's how everything is right now. I have three fan blade covers off, so I'm gonna go flip the breaker. If the breaker doesn't trip, that means they all came on, I think. So I'm going to turn it off, come back, put the covers on, then go back and turn them on. It's too bad I don't have another guy here, you know? All right, here it goes. It's on. It stayed on. You know what that means? That means there's no short. No more short. All right, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go put my uh, fan shrouds on. Save me another trip. Oh, guess what? Hey, this is a cool fact. These right here, this is for the air conditioning of the store. Ain't that neat? See, look, we got compressors. Check it out. AC. AC. They go to this big ass air handler over here. That thing. That's cool. All right, so I got everything ready. Turn the breakers on. All that put back together, and I'm so confident, okay? I'm so confident that it's all going to work, that I got everything, and I'm, I'm clearing out from the walk-in cooler. And if you're wondering, no, I'm not moving all this shit back over there where it was. That's uh, 
that's their problem, not mine. All right, they're back on. Now I'm gonna come over here. I wonder if defrost is, if it's in defrost, it might be. Ah, it's infecting defrost. That's okay. So I'm just gonna clean it up in here. I gotta undo my manual stem. Right, right there. Take that off, put the cap on. And yo, that's it. All right, so here we go. This is what it looks like. It's all finished up now. I got 10 fans running. It's in defrost, obviously. Uh-huh. Thanks for watching. Later.